to be able to be safely three to four feet from this apex predator that is known throughout the world and to hear their noises, their chuffles, to hear their stories is, is pretty impressive and pretty awesome. People just don't understand what the problem is and don't understand that he needs help and he and his kind need help. You know, we know that tigers are endangered in the wild, but it's hard to believe there's a tiger problem here in the United States. Hi, my name's Katie. This is Raja, and we're here at Carolina Tiger Rescue. Our animals come from all over the United States. We have about 50 animals currently. Eight of them are cat species. 17 tigers, Raja, Carolina, India, Capriccio, Mila, Riley, Roscoe, Camilla, Saber, Shira, Monomoki, Tio, Madonna, Emerson, Yanaba, Tasha. We have a leopard named Anthony, he came from our largest rescue in Colorado. We have two lions, Roman and Reina, who came from rescue in Ohio. We actually have one wild born cougar, his name is Bo. He was uh, orphaned, we're not sure what happened to mom. We have Elvis, who's a serval. Servals are wildcat from Africa. Um, they're no known for their massive ears. He was literally dropped off on our doorstep one night and we didn't know he was coming. It cost us about $300 a day just to feed them. It cost us $80,000 a year is our food budget. Sanctuary is a word that some places will throw around. To be federally accredited sanctuary, you have to abide by four rules, and that is don't buy, sell, or trade, no breeding, are a nonprofit, and no contact with the animals. No contact means that we don't allow the public to have come into contact with the animals, and we take that a step further and we don't have contact with them. So um, at no point are we going to share the same space with him. He has lived around people in captivity his entire life, and yet he is a wild and he is a dangerous animal. With animals like this, they've never lived in the wild. They are generations of living in captivity, so rehabilitating and re-releasing is not something that they can do. Most of our guys were taken from their moms almost at birth, whether it's to be sold to a private owner or to using cub petting. And in the wild, these guys would stay with their moms until they're about two years old, learning all the things of how to hunt and how to find territory and how to stay safe, essentially. And so even though those instincts are there, he doesn't have that knowledge of how to use those instincts to survive. So once they're here, they stay here for the rest of their lives. We're able to help the public understand that they have each in their own personalities. Raja loves to chuffle with people and, and he will follow the tour group along the tour path as far as he can go. So then we have the lions next door who are like, as long as I'm sleeping, I'm good. Sleeping or eating, that's what I care about. And they have their personalities and I think that helps people connect with them and help them say, I care about these guys. I wanna help in this problem that I'm learning about. States like North Carolina are one of four states that don't have laws against owning an exotic species. We don't know how many tigers are in the United States. The low estimate is about 5,000. The majority of those are in the hands of private owners, roadside zoos, or the entertainment industry. We know what the allure is. They're gorgeous. We're not disillusioned at how cute they are as cubs and how gorgeous they become. Where the problem comes in is people owning them is they think they can love the wild out of them and you can't. You have a 350 pound tiger built to survive. He doesn't need anybody else instinctually. He needs to take down prey and protect himself in his territory. And I think people forget that. I think they think, well, if I love it and I care for it and I provide for it, then I'm going to control it. You can't do that. And your choice matters. One less person paying money to pet that cub is going to make a difference. Telling people why you're choosing not to do it is going to make a bigger difference. Decide what your values are. We can't tell everybody what to do, but we can give them the education and hopefully the tools so that they can make informed decisions. That's what's important to us and what's important to his future and the future tigers in captivity and the future tigers of the world. We have done this to them and we can change that for them.